Hey, all you physicists! Welcome to the next uh, lesson in the Modern Physics playlist. And today, we'll be talking about the ultraviolet catastrophe. And what this is is basically the seed of quantum mechanics and how it originated. So, before I start off, I'm gonna ask you this question: Do you know how a light bulb works? Now that's kind of kind of a weird question to start off, but it relates to this um, ultraviolet catastrophe, and I'll show you how it does. So, how does a light bulb um, create light? So I'm going to draw a light bulb here, and once again, pardon my crude drawing, and I'm going to draw like the thing here, the little metal plate, and then the wire coming up with the metal filament in the middle. Okay. And which are like the, the the wires. Okay, so pretend that this is the the wires connecting to the bulb. Now, how does this bulb actually light up? So, how this bulb lights up is: imagine if current goes in through here, goes through here, goes through the metal filament, and goes back out. And in this part, this part is the one that I'm interested in. So, if we magnify this part, if we magnify this part. we would see some sort of metal strip, right? <laughs> metal strip? No. Okay, so we'll see some, some sort of metal strip there. And this metal filament, basically, when current goes through this metal filament, um, there's, it, there is some sort of resistance in here. Like, the, the electrons that come through the wire um, collide with the metal element the metal atoms in this metal strip and this creates heat this generates heat because of all the collisions between the electrons and the metal atoms and due to this heat um, light is emitted so as more heat is generated the, the light bulb becomes brighter and this was found and and this was actually um, found by those physicists and they and they wrote down two rules two laws regarding that to to formulae regarding that. The first one was that the energy that was radiated from the metal strip and that energy basically means heat energy. So the energy that was radiated is proportional to the temperature to the power of 4. So a, what this means is that a small increase in temperature would result, a, would result in a large increase in the heat that was given off. And the second one stated that the frequency of the light that was emitted was proportional is proportional to the temperature. And basically, what this is based off was that it was on the classical th um, theory that light behaved as waves. So, back in their time, classical physicists thought that light behaved solely as a wave. So if, if I were to draw the light out, it would look like that. So they believe that light behaved like that and it went into your eye, right? It went all the way into your eye. And they behave as a wave. And we know what frequency is. Frequency is the uh frequency is the number of cycles and a cycle is just one wavelength. So I'm here to here. How many cycles per second? So this would have a smaller frequency than this. Because this one has more cycles per second. Okay, so what this what the second law states that is that the higher the temperature, the higher the frequency. So this one, this wave would be let's say a thousand Kelvin, and then this wave would be like two thousand Kelvin. Because the higher the temperature, the higher the frequency. So the smaller the wavelengths. And this was basically what the classical physicists thought, that light behaves only as a wave. But now we know better. We know that light behaves both as a particle and a wave. And the ultraviolet catastrophe leads up to that. So if we were to plot this on a graph, and actually I'll give you the actual formula of what was postulated. So a guy called Rayleigh. Rayleigh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, his name. I'll just write it down for you. Rayleigh. What he, he postulated was that, um, let's say we have, we're going to use the same metal strip as before, and in that metal strip, we had little tiny oscillators, 
that vibrates back and forth. So they vibrate back and forth like that in 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 a, in a wave. So like that, okay. And they vibrate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all the time. Now, um, when light hits it, or actually when when it when it gets heated up, what happens is that these vibrations, as as the second law states, as it heats up, the vibrations get more. The frequency of its vibrations gets higher and higher. And this emits light because of the vibrations, and the and the light that, that is emitted has the same wavelength as the frequency as the wavelength of the vibration of the oscillators. So this wave right here, this wave will be equal to this wave, the light that was given off. So the light gives is given off by this metal strip. And he wrote this in an equation, and this was his, his equation that the intensity written as a function of temperature and, and frequency was proportional to the frequency cubed and times oh sorry actually this was before really I think that really no okay yeah really what his formula was that was that frequency that the intensity written as a function of temperature and frequency was proportional to the frequency squared times temperature Okay, and I, you don't really need to memorize this formula. All this is saying is that if we plot it on a graph, so let's say we have a graph where on the y-axis we have intensity, and on the x-axis we have wavelength. Okay, so what this states is that at a smaller temperature, we would have a curve something like this, right? Okay, and then at a, and let's say this is at let's say one thousand Kelvin, and then at a bit of a higher temperature, the peak would peak somewhere closer to the, to the the peak would be somewhere at a shorter wavelength and then drop down again, and this would be at two thousand Kelvin, and then at three thousand Kelvin, we're peaking even further and drop down again. Now it does this all the way up to let's say. 5,000 Kelvin, okay, and according to this theory, according to the classical theory, I'm going to write this down in classical in brackets, according to the classical theory, this line will go, go all the way up into infinity, and this is basically the ultraviolet um, catastrophe, because we know that the intensity of the light cannot go all the way up to infinity. So what the ultraviolet catastrophe states was that it predicted that an ideal black body, um, I'll write down actually, the ultraviolet, the UV catastrophe, catastrophe predicted that an ideal black body, and I'll explain what black body is in, in a second, an ideal black body at thermal equilibrium will emit radiation radi radi oh, radiation with infinite power okay so what a black body is is an object that absorbs everything, absorbs all light, and emits all light. So, let me write it down. Black body. An ideal black body is right, an ideal black body is theoretical. It's purely theoretical. This is important to note. It is not. It is not possible to achieve this in real life. Not that I know of. So. What uh, an ideal black body would do is it will absorb, oh sorry, it would absorb all the light that came in and reflecting none. So that has the term black body because since it reflects nothing, it would not show any light, it will give off any light, it would not reflect any light back, back into your eyes. However, an ideal black body would also emit light, so emit 100% of the light back. And it's different, and emitting is different from, re of, from reflecting. 
because emitting is it is a production of its own light and this is basically shown in here in this little diagram right because this metal strip was emitting its own light okay however we're coming to this problem how do we solve this problem because in actual experiments what well, what they found out now use light blue for this was that the curve at 5000 Kelvin looks some sort looks something like that and it dropped off sharply like that so this section right here this discrepancy in the data right here occurs within the range of the ultraviolet spectrum and hence the term of the ultraviolet catastrophe the ultraviolet catastrophe because this this discrepancy in, in the in the in the two theories the classical way the the theoretical um, uh, curve and the experiment and the experimental curve was different and this was called the ultraviolet catastrophe and in the next part I'll explain how this catastrophe was solved so until next time I'll see you guys then